Hello, this is Janice from Space to Relax and the video I'm about to show you is a replay of a live Qigong class which I taught this morning via Zoom. I'll be teaching these classes on Tuesdays and Thursdays every week for the duration of COVID-19 and until I can get back into my face-to-face -face acupuncture and Chinese medicine clinics. This video is suitable for those of you who are beginners and also anyone who might have a little bit more advanced Qigong training. I hope you enjoy it and if you'd like to join me for the live classes then please click the link which is next to this video. If you're watching this video on YouTube then so you don't miss future videos that I upload here just hit the red subscribe button. Okay so for those of you who are happy to stand for around 20 to 30 minutes um, that would be great if you can stand but for anyone who thinks they might get a little bit tired or feel like they need to sit down at some stage, it might be handy for you to have a chair next to you. So you see, I've got my chair here, so just I'm just gonna demonstrate quickly to those of you who would prefer to sit, just how to sit on the chair. And I did do this in maybe a little bit more detail on Tuesday, so if you want to refer back to Tuesday's replay video for a bit more detail on that, then by all means do so. So I'm just gonna grab the chair first. And if you want to sit down, the idea is to sit on the first third of the chair. So sit kind of forward in the chair. So you're not kind of slouching back in it. Um, you're not, you're, your back is upright. That's really what you're looking for. You're looking for your hip, your knees to be hip width distance apart and your feet also. So if you just look down at your feet, if you're sitting, and just check that your toes are facing towards the front, your feet are parallel. So this whole structure from the hips all the way down through the knees, to the ankles and into the toes, it's like you're on train tracks. So everything is running parallel. So you're supporting your own back if you can. So ideally, I'll just ch change the chair to the side for you and show you. So you're sitting on this first third of the chair, so you're forward and having the back straight with the shoulders just drop down. So it's no good if you maybe get a little bit tired and then you decide, oh, I just need a little bit of a rest and you slump back like this. It's very bad for your back. So if you do need more support for your back, what I recommend you do is you sit right back in the chair. And a straight back chair is obviously ideal. Um, and support your back that way. Okay. So then, um, that's the position. If you want to now um, sit, if you're comfortable sitting, that's great. But if you prefer to stand, which is what I'll be doing, follow along with me in the standing position. Oh. Can I just check as well that everybody has their, uh, have, has their uh, microphone on mute? I can hear a little bit of sound in the background. So can you maybe just double check by going to the left hand corner of your screen and just checking that you're muted? Just heard a little bit of feedback there. So that's great. Thank you. Um, okay, so for standing then, um, what you want to do is make sure, again, you've got this kind of train track idea going down from the hips, through the knees and down into the feet. So everything is kind of hip width distance apart. And just check that the feet, um, hopefully you can see my feet here, the feet are parallel, so you don't have one foot sticking out to the side or the other. But what some of you might find is that to have that parallel kind of arrangement of your feet, it actually feels a little bit tight around the hips here. And that's because a lot of people have very kind of, you know, there is a lot of tightness around the outside of the hips. And in fact, a lot of people, if you watch them walk, they don't walk with their feet parallel. They walk with their feet out to the side. So you see their toes going out to the side. And that's because it's very difficult to kind of bring, you know, the legs around and bring the hips in. So if you can't quite get that parallel arrangement with your feet, don't worry about that. You may need to just go just a tiny little bit out with the big toes that might just give you a little bit more ease but bear in mind that what you're working towards is having your feet parallel and as you practice that a little bit more that should get easier as you build up those muscles and that flexibility in the outer parts of the hips okay so what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on the four movements of the, or the four directions of the movement of chi so those directions are very simple they're up down, in, and out, okay? And we're going to do a simple exercise which utilizes those four movements. 
And the reason that we do this is that if you can get your chi or your energy moving in all four directions within your body, then you're really helping to maximize the flow of chi around your body to really open it up, to really reduce any areas or pockets where the chi might be maybe a little bit deficient or a little bit stagnant. And then when you open everything up, it's a bit like you're unblocking little dams that are blocking the flow of water in a river. As you open everything up, everything becomes much more open and free flowing. And that then naturally creates the conditions by which your body can bring itself into healthy balance because all the different systems within your body are able to much more freely communicate with each other. So the thing with chi and the movement of chi is that it also it moves in circles and it moves in spirals. It doesn't tend to move in straight lines. So as the chi is, is, is traveling through the body and moving through the main channels of chi flow, but also throughout the whole body in the very tiny little channels of chi flow as well, it moves in spirals. So it's a spiral kind of movement. It's quite dynamic. Um, and chi kind of likes circular movement. So we're going to do an exercise today which involves that circular movement and actually promotes that circular flow of chi even more. So you just simply need to follow along with me. So we're in this lovely standing position. And what you also want to make sure is that your shoulders are nice and relaxed. So just really shake out your hands a little bit for just to begin with. Let your arms be really, really, really floppy like a puppet on a string. And then as you breathe in, I'm going to ask you to breathe in through your nose and then breathe out through your mouth, which we don't usually do in Qigong. Usually we're breathing in and out through the nose, everything in and out through the nose. But just for these three breaths, I'm going to ask you to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. And as you breathe in, I'm going to ask you to pick up your shoulders right up towards your ears, tense everything. And then as you breathe out through your mouth, you're going to drop your shoulders down. Just let everything go and relax. So just follow along with me for three breaths. So breathing in. And breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. And just shake your arms out a little bit there now. Okay, right, so now you should be nice and relaxed in the shoulders. And then just check that your chin is parallel with the floor, so your head isn't too elevated up this way and not too tucked back down towards the throat. You want this parallel arrangement of the, the bottom of the chin with the ground, and maybe just tuck the chin in back a little bit towards your throat, and you'll notice that as you do that, you feel a bit of kind of elongation in the back of the neck and even maybe going down into kind of in between the shoulder blades, between the shoulder blades and the spine. So that little tiny movement there of tucking the chin in really can be very helpful in easing any tension that you might be holding in the neck and in the shoulders and in between the shoulder blades, which is where a lot of us can feel that tension, especially if we feel physically quite tired. So just that tiny movement there of the, of the chin coming back towards the throat can make a big difference in how you feel with the neck and shoulders and in that upper part of the back. So now let's focus a little bit on these four directions of chin movement. So just beginning by breathing in and out now through your nose. So the mouth is closed. The tongue is resting against the roof of your mouth and the tip of your tongue is resting against the back of your upper teeth. And just check there's no tension in your jaw by just opening your mouth just for a moment, very slightly, and wiggling your jaw from side to side. And then closing the mouth again. And as you breathe in and out through the nose, the inhalation is causing the belly to expand. So breathing in, your belly expands like blowing up a balloon. And as you breathe out, the belly sinks and moves back towards your spine. So this type of breathing is called abdominal breathing. And this is what I was teaching in the first class on Tuesday. So if you want to go back to that class and go over abdominal breathing in a little bit more detail, 
you can head to my Facebook page where I posted the replay or go back to your email because you should have it there in your email somewhere. So breathing in, the belly expands and breathing out, the belly sinks back towards your spine. And just really relax into that and feel that smooth flow of the breath in and out. The breath ideally should be smooth and soft and silent. So no kind of big hopping and popping noises. They're not necessary at all. Just nice, gentle, inward and outward flow of the breath. So now we're going to start with an exercise called the circles exercise, which is the one that's going to show you the four movements of chi and actually promote that movement of chi within your body. But what I would say to you is don't think about this too hard. Just do the movements and the chi or the energy will move itself. So there's no kind of really major concentrating or focusing on moving the chi itself. All you're doing is you're, by doing these very simple movements, creating the conditions by which the chi can move in these four directions. So beginning just by placing one hand on top of the other, just in front of the lower belly area, keeping the shoulders nice and relaxed. And then very slowly now, so the palms are facing upwards, very slowly begin to pull the hands apart, keeping the palms facing upwards, so this is the outward movement of chi flow. So you're thinking here of stretching and spreading the chi outwards. And as you move the hands outwards now, begin to turn the fingers away from you. Turning the hands around just by very gentle rotation in the wrist, keeping the shoulders down. The palms are still facing up towards the ceiling. And the fingers are really relaxed. So that's the outward movement of chi. And as you're standing here now, really feel the broadness in the chest, across the collarbones. Feel that openness in the whole of the chest area. And then maybe running down through the heads of the arm bones at the front down into the upper arms. You should feel maybe a little bit of a stretch here if your hands are out towards the sides. Now, for any of you that have any issues with the shoulders or elbows or neck, then we're going to lift the arms in a moment. And what I'd like you to do is just take it easy on yourself. So if you're restricted in terms of your movement in any of these directions, just go to really well within your limits. Don't push it too much and definitely don't be in any pain. So just take it easy and just go to wherever you can go comfortably and then just hold it in that position. So now we're going to move the chi up. So now just begin with the shoulders down, you're going to be lifting the arms. Very slowly, palms facing up towards the sky. Arms are out towards the sides and lifting the chi, keeping the shoulders down, not allowing them to come up like this. Okay. And when the palms of the hands reach shoulder level, then we're going to move the chi inwards. So now from here, it's like you're gathering the chi or the energy from the outside and drawing it into your body. So keeping the shoulders down, again, bringing the hands towards each other, Nice and slowly, relaxing in the shoulders. You see now how my hands are coming together, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and forming a roof shape in front of my forehead. So if your hands are too high like this, you'll find that your shoulders have raised up and you create a little bit of tension. You don't want to be that high. You want to have them positions just in front of your forehead here. So if you're looking straight ahead now and you can't see your hands, then you know that they're too high. So just lower them a tiny bit. 
and from here now we're going to move the chi down. So firstly, drop the shoulders and you see how it causes a tiny movement in your hands and in your elbows downwards. And now begin to just change the angle a little bit and move the elbows in towards each other so that you end up with the elbows and the hands parallel. The palms are now facing each other and now continue to drop the shoulders and drop the elbows and you'll find that that leads the hands down. So moving and encouraging the internal flow of your chi in a downwards direction. And then coming back to your starting position, which was one hand on top of the other. So now we'll do that with a little bit more flow for this next round. So from here, just close your eyes for a moment, breathing into your belly. As you inhale, the belly expands. As you exhale, the belly shrinks back towards the spine. And now beginning to separate the hands slowly, palms facing upwards, spreading the chi outwards. Palms facing the ceiling or the sky. And now with the shoulders down, begin to lift the chi, encouraging the upward movement, chi flow. Just as far as your shoulders. And now the inward movement of chi, gathering in lovely, nourishing chi from the outside, encouraging it into your body. Now drop your shoulders. Bring the elbows together and moving the chi, encouraging it to move down through the center of the body. And coming back to your starting position again. So if you think you've got the hang of this movement, you might want to try this next round with your eyes closed. So the only thing you really want to be conscious of is lovely smooth flow, smooth and relaxed flow. Don't be too worried so much about the movement. I gave you that in quite a bit of detail there. But if you think, oh gosh, did I do that bit right? Or am I, am I in the wrong position with my hands? Don't worry about it, just go with the flow. Just feel the flow of your hands and your arms moving. Keep your shoulders down and just enjoy this lovely flowing movement. So just beginning one more time. Bring your shoulders down as you lift the chi, encouraging that movement. Chi upwards. Hands in the shoulder level. Bring the hands towards each other and make this upside down V shape at the roof of a house, dropping the shoulders, dropping the elbows to bring the hands parallel, palms facing and moving the hands and the arms down. Now come back to your starting position. Now to encourage this movement of chi, certainly with the up and down part even more, what you can do is begin to bring a little bit of movement into the knees. So as you start to bring the hands upwards in that upward movement, when you're lifting the hands, maybe just think of in the knees, just elevating and just straightening the knees a tiny little bit more but you're not locking the knees out. You're not creating any tension in the knees. So it could be only a couple of millimeters of a movement, but just have the idea that you're getting taller. And then when you bring the hands down through the center of the body, just sink in the knees. Again, literally only a couple of millimeters and really feel yourself kind of grounding, almost getting heavier, feeling you know your feet stuck to the ground almost, really encouraging that movement of chi down through the body. So let's try that with a little bit of elevation 
and then sinking in the knees. So at the moment, the knees are just kind of in a little micro bend. They're just nice and loose and relaxed. And now beginning to move the hands out towards the side. And at this point now, just feel yourself getting a little bit taller. Not locking out the knees, keeping the shoulders down, feeling everything lifting. And then in this tall position, drawing in the hands from the outside towards the center of the body, bringing the elbows together. And at this point now, start to sink in the knees, dropping the weight down, really feeling yourself getting heavy, feeling yourself really well grounded. Coming back to the center position with the hands resting in front of the lower belly. And now just do that two more times on your own. When you finish your two rounds, just allowing the hands to rest in the starting position. And then to finish this exercise, place one hand flat on your lower belly, below your belly button, and then place the other hand directly on top of that. And then with your eyes closed, just circling by rubbing your belly nice and gently and slowly in one direction and then change the direction. Doesn't matter which direction first, doesn't matter how many circles, just enjoy that lovely warm feeling in your lower belly. And then keeping the eyes closed now, bring the palms of the hands together and rub them until they get really, really, really hot. If you're wearing glasses now, you might want to take them off because I'm gonna ask you to put your hands to your face. And place one hand, one palm over each eye, fingers facing up towards the ceiling. Feel the heat from your hands going into your eyes, through the backs of your eyes, nourishing your mind. And then as you feel that heat dissipate, just to bring yourself back into the room, into the waking up space. And just give your face a little rub and slowly opening your eyes as you do that. And then just shaking out the hands and shaking out the feet. Okay, so that little exercise I call the circles method. It has a very fancy name in Chinese, in Qigong, um, but it's the circles method. That's what all my students know it by. And it is just simply encouraging that four directional movement of chi. So out and up, in and down. And the more you just do that very simple movement, the more the chi will just naturally start to do that for you. So with qigong, all you're doing is you're creating the kind of optimal conditions by which the chi can flow and be 
more unimpeded and be more balanced in your body. So then your body naturally returns to a healthy state. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to learn some more Qigong from me, then you can do three things. The first thing is you can sign up for my free three-part Qigong video series, which will be delivered to your email over the course of around a week. And you'll find the link to sign up for that on my homepage on my website, which is spacetorelax.com. The second thing you can do is sign up and join me for the Zoom live classes, which are on Tuesday mornings and Thursday afternoons, and they'll be for the duration of COVID-19. So I'll put the link next to this video somewhere either below or above so you can sign up and join me there. And the third thing you can do if you're watching this video on YouTube is hit the red subscribe button so that you don't miss any future videos from me. If you did enjoy this video, then please share it with your family and friends. Hopefully they'll join in and uh, have some fun with practicing Qigong too. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.